Hello, today we're going to talk about backup for Windows and how it can help you automate the Windows Server backup programs on each of your Windows boxes that are available. Uh, Windows Backup is available th from Windows Vista all the way through Windows Server 12. Uh, each version of Server Backup for Windows can or cannot do various things. So you'll find in here, inside of our plugins, a lot of references to different uh, OS types and their capabilities. So keep that aware as you move through the plugin that uh, there are different options available based on OS. So today we're going to launch our, uh, we've installed our plugin, so do plugin install, basically you go to plugin manager. You'll notice here that we already have it installed, but to install it, go ahead and go here to manage plugins and hit add plugin. Uh, at that time it will add it in here, you'll need to right click on this and make sure that you enable the plugin. And before it's all complete, you'll need to make sure you come to Reload Plugins, Reload Database Agent Plugins. Once that is all complete, close down your uh, console and reopen it, re-log in. And once you do, the plugin should be fully functional for you. Let's go in and open up one of our computers. And here we'll have a backup Windows plugin, as you can see here. All right, this is what it looks like. Uh, before we enable backups, what we're going to do is we're first going to just take a look at what we have for drives. So we come over here and we notice that we have a C drive, a D drive, and an E drive. I've hung this E drive off of here. It's a Seagate backup slim uh, disk, basically 1.5 terabyte USB disk to use as my backup medium. This is ideally how you would want to back things up. Uh, is by using a direct uh, disk share. The reason being is most of the Microsoft uh, backup services across all the different platforms uh, have the ability to do uh, uh, different um, uh, reconciliation points. And so if you're looking to have a history of points to go back to so that you can step back in time at any point uh, throughout your daily backups and be able to restore files from a week or two weeks ago um, versus just only one one rotating backup that keeps refreshing, then you're going to want to have some type of storage that is compatible with those features. Uh, going to Microsoft and reading up on the different compatibilities uh, and, and the different services that are available and how to connect to them uh, are all transferred straight over to the plugin and, and, the, and the points that you would put into the plugin. So anyhow, we're going to go ahead and make a simple backup today. We go ahead and click up on our backup windows, and first thing we're going to want to do before we do anything, because we can't do anything else, there's no buttons here to do anything, is we have to enable backups on this machine. When we enable backups on this machine, it goes out and checks to make sure that there's a, a, a the type of OS it is, and if backups are available and installed. Um, once that is done, you can then come over here and select the drive that you want to use as your included drives and select where you want this backup to go. Once that's done, you can set your time frame. Let's go to, let's say, 5.30, my time. All right. And by selecting all critical, you're going to say, I want a VSS copy of the system regularly at this date, uh, where I can restore not only files and folders, but I can do full system state restore and bare bone hardware restores. So that's what you get when you do an all critical. It makes sure that the backups include all storage volumes that it might need, as well as any system volumes. Uh, once that is done, go ahead and just hit Save Job. And you'll notice down here at the bottom it goes out and communicates with the system and verifies that it can configure and set up that backup job. And it should report back to us what it's going to do. Let's watch it here a second. There we go. Looks like we got it in. And you can see here uh, we have a bare metal is now included. System state backup was not included. Uh, volume and backup recovery. Um, components and backup. Now, keep them on bare metal includes system state, and that's why it's not a system state only backup. Right? Uh, components and backup, no. Files included, excluded, nothing is excluded. Uh, 
We do have our VSS backup copy option there, as you can see there. And we're going to the E drive at 1730 hours, and the schedule is now enabled and ready to go. All right. Uh, we are now functioning, and this backup will start taking place every day at 7 or 530. Uh, we can, uh, now that we've let this go and it's done a couple backups, let's do a small time warp and assume that we're just stepped a week into the future. We can come over to available backups. Oh, we don't see anything there because it's not, I haven't scanned yet. I'm sorry, we've got to scan. Um, let me have that, do that a second to scan. Once that scans out, we will get this available backups come in. So it needs a few more minutes here. So. Uh, but you can see here, here's its previous history as it's doing backups and such. These were a couple weekends where our days where I had my computer off. Um, and you can see here, blippity blip, we are doing backups. We do have a help page that tries to explain some of these features and setups. While we're waiting for this to finish, uh, give me a second. I'm getting here. We're going to flip over and take a look at um, uh, the main manager. And that's right here under the view menu, Squidward's backup. And this is where you see globally all your systems. All right, here we go. It pops up and this is what it looks like. Now we've just launched this one, so it currently isn't uh, showing anything yet relative to last backup. But once you give it a few minutes here to go through its scanning, it will come back here and pick this information up. You'll notice here that we also have a squid server that we had set up previously that is currently failing. Last backup is 419. All right, so we're able to see that that server has been failing. We can now use this tool to go and determine what's actually taking place in that server. So we go click on it and say open console of that server. Go to the backup tab of that server. And here we should see history of our backups. Uh, event logs with anything, any issues that Microsoft backups might be reporting. Any available backups and their, and their current histories and extra volumes. And the current backup time. So we know we're failing here. So the first thing we want to do is find out why we're failing. We're, we're currently backing up the C drive to a custom drive. Uh, it looks like a network location. All right, we're doing it at this time, and we're doing it all critical as well. So here we can go ahead and just rerun the saved job and find out what it's complaining about that it's failing. You can see here our gears are cranking away as it's off doing its job there. And as we can take a look here, here's the output back. It goes, it's doing some stuff, it's telling you some basic warnings about the security of a network share. Uh, only one remote share folder is allowed per backup storage location, so keep that in mind. And then the actual end problem was, count for the password is expired. And that could be either on the end system or in this one. Most likely it's on this machine that this account here has an expired password on this machine and needs to be updated. We can figure that out by doing maybe something to the fact of this. Oh, let's see it here. And let's do a change password on this guy. And let's go see if that's going to execute and finish that refresh. Okay, it looks like looks like it did go successfully. Let's go see if that helps us any here. Go back to our backup windows. Everything is selected. Go ahead and save job again. And let's see if we can get through it this time. If not, we'll need to go update the password at this location, whoever is holding this information. These passwords, this user must, when you're doing network location, this user must be on the local machine as well as on the remote location.
Okay, there it goes. Looks like we are now enabled. There we are. You can see that. Uh, everything is included, and we are back up and enabled now. So just a simple password issue, uh, and we were able to determine that problem by using our save job button to try to execute the backup uh, function inside the system and schedule it, which it uses that system tool to go out and check that the backup is available and passwords and everything are, gone, so are available and working correctly. So it actually goes out and verifies that it's going to work before it actually sets the schedule and returns an OK to us. Um, and so if it fails, usually reading the information down here will help you determine whether or not you've got some type of syntax error in your, your includes or your or your targets, uh, or if you mainly usually got a password-related issue where a username and password's not working correctly, very common. Keep in mind that you do need to have the username and password exist at both locations, both on the server that you're backing up and the location that you're storing the backup to. Um, now that we have that done, we should start to get more backups going on here, and that'll fire off again on the next backup round. So we should see that here populate for today's date. So we're going to see a big dip here. And uh, and then today's date show up as we get back up rolling on this machine. So that was we were able to solve that problem and get him back up and running. We get metrics for these machines. So as machines are doing things, we get to see here what those machines are doing. We get to watch the history of uh, each machine as it's doing backups and the number of backups that we're getting over time for the global system. And we also get global event logs where we can pan through uh, record sets uh, of all the event logs that we have coming in related to backups across all our systems. So we're being able to see all our backup uh, logs right here for all our systems at one time. So we're able to manage a large amount of systems very easily, see what problems we're having, which ones are problem systems, when the last backups had completed. We're able to come in here and enable or disable backup management or backup monitoring, which will then, anytime a backup failure takes place, we'll go off and create a ticket and alert you to that uh, system having problems. We will see those alerts in our computer consoles uh, down here in our alert window. So let's see if we can get some not any here. Alright, let's go pull our alerts. I know we should have some. They're probably just so old since it's 19th. We're a little farther beyond than where we should be. Um, so I think we'll have to find those alerts elsewhere because they will probably be in here still. Let's take a look. Uh, that looks like all our active alerts are gone. Yeah, we're total of zero, so we're completely cleared out for alerts. So, we, unfortunately, the video is on this one's been so old since that one's failing in, uh, in our development system here. The alerts just are not here at that point in time. Uh, not a problem, um, but they do show up here. <laughs> and uh, you'll also be able to have them create tickets for you so that it will have a, a ticket with each alert that comes out so that you will be notified, your team will be notified when backup problems are taking place and how to go about fixing them. Uh, that's pretty much the backup system as a whole. It's pretty simple. Uh, please read up about Windows backup, server backups and the capabilities based on your OS. Uh, and have fun with it. Uh, let us know if there's anything we can do. Enjoy.